Might just look like a big hole in the front yard, but one day it will be a pond. So there's a whole process here. There's reasons why we do things the way we do. I raise beef, pork, and chicken. The well produces 100 gallons a minute. That's the closest I'll ever come to winning the lottery. So we had 13 beehives here at one time. They're excited for breakfast. I planted this sunflower seed. What's up, hungry hippos? freedom, get to do a lot of what you want to do. The minute you start cutting corners on something, the holes start to show up. My name is Joel Holmes and I run Fort Rock Farms. Through the design that we've that we've put together here, um, all of our income comes from the farm. We don't have town jobs. We don't have online jobs. Uh, this place provides everything that we need. One day, you won't see anything ready, and you'll come out the next morning, and you've got three ready to eat. This is doable for anybody on, on any level, on any scale. The best green beans you've ever had. We do customer direct beef, pork, and pasture-raised chicken sales. And then we do honey, seasonal vegetables. Amy's got her pickles and we've sold firewood. You name it, we've done it. But uh, it's the beef, pork, and chicken that, that's the, the majority of our income. Hi, Booger. This guy likes to get your hand caught in between the rails and crush your fingers. So these steers are being finished out for customers that wanted their beef finished out on grain. So we're using a milled feed, specially designed just for, for our needs. Uh, these stalls here get cleaned out. This is where the manure comes from uh, to put with the wood chips to make all the compost for the veggies, the garden, all the grasses and whatnot. The difference between grass fed and finished and grain finished, the grain finished is always gonna be easier to, to cook, a little bit more forgiving. And it's the one that the customers keep coming back to buy. So we use a uh, steamed and flaked corn, molasses, and alfalfa. You can see the percentage of alfalfa and hay compared to the percentage of grain. It's very little. So the pigs, probably my favorite part of this whole deal. I love their personalities and what they do for us. Everything's set up portable. That's electric fencing. You can put them anywhere you want on the property. You don't need big fencing. You don't need big infrastructure. Any of the vegetables that we grow that we don't eat, they go right to these guys. Uh, they love it. We don't have any waste. Uh, they just turn it right into manure. The pigs get to be pigs. They get to root around, dig around, get plenty of exercise. They get mud holes to stay cool. Typically lots of shade. It's a pretty good life for a pig. So when we started this, we had no idea what we were doing. No clue at all. I'd never run a tractor. Um, I had a little basic plumbing background from a job that I had in high school. We learned all this stuff together. Probably cost us twice as much as it should have um, because when you make those mistakes, you have to pay for it. So this place is like a, getting a college degree. Everybody has to pay for college. You'll find so many people that are willing to talk with you about this stuff when you just kind of walk in and say, Look, really don't know what I'm doing. Uh, this is what I would like to accomplish. You know, are you willing to help me? We have literally found nobody that said, no, I don't want to help you. Before permaculture, like everybody else, I just fight my way through life. Um, and anytime something uh, presented a challenge, you just fight harder. Um, and that's, you can do that sometimes, and it's, it's still good to do. Um, you got to put the work in, uh, but now my brain just goes to, What's the quickest way to resolve this? How do I exert the least amount of energy um, to solve this problem? And that comes right down to permaculture thinking uh, where you're just working with what you have at hand uh, instead of having unrealistic expectations. So there's a whole process here. There's, there's reasons why we do things the way we do. Most of it's based on bad experiences uh, that we've had to overcome. You can be a part of this at a small fraction, or you can go all out 
and before you know it, it's completely consumed your life and you're just a happier person for it. Again, if, if our family can do it, anybody can because we were not the likely candidates uh, to pull this off and, and we've pulled it off. So this is kind of the heartbeat. This is kind of the heartbeat of the property is our water system. So this is 20,000 gallons uh, of storage, basically, and it's uh, just a charge line system. So we have a well down at the bottom of the property that pumps the water up in a two inch main line, uh, just a quarter mile to get to this, this point here. When we first bought this property, we knew that there was good water in the area, uh, but there, there's no guarantee. This is the water that that we live on. This is, we drink it, uh, we don't filter it. Uh, it's from a deep well, it's 379 feet deep. The well produces 100 gallons a minute. That's the closest I'll ever come to winning the lottery. Finding a piece of property that had a good well on it like that. So all the tanks are set with a laser at the same height uh, and they fill and drain at the same time. It might seem to be overkill to have 20,000 gallons uh, in storage there, but when you have tens of thousands of dollars worth of animals uh, and five or six thousand dollars worth of vegetables in production at any given time, uh, if you have an issue with water, things start dying really, really fast. We could access the water with a solar power well pump without having to spend a ton of money or using a bunch of power to get it up out of the ground. So it was kind of the right cocktail of, hey, the water's there, it's available. We can access it by using solar power we could build whatever we want. We got a quote from the power company for anywhere from 100 to $120,000 to bring power to the property. And solar is, is the answer. We have everything that everybody else in town has. Two air conditioners, washer, dryer. If Amy wants to do laundry at 11 o'clock at night, because we have something to do the next morning. She doesn't think about it, she just does it. If we wanna run the air conditioner until midnight because we have a bunch of company over and the house is getting hot, we just run the air conditioner. The systems 10 or 15 years ago even, you were constantly monitoring your batteries and you were just worried about power all the time. All that stuff is pretty well gone if you step into you know, the newest, latest, greatest stuff. In almost four years now, we've had no power outages, no issues, no burps, no farts, no nothing. You would think that you would need a larger array, but the lithium batteries that we use take a charge so fast, you just don't need the huge arrays that just take up you know, half an acre like you used to. The solar panels uh, bring the energy uh, into this closet here, and a charge controller uh, changes that power uh, into something that the batteries can use and store. Everything is completely automated, completely dummy proof. Once the system was designed and installed, it has literally been maintenance free. There's nothing to do battery wise, there's nothing to do uh, to maintain any of it. The system is robust. It just takes care of all of our needs at a fraction of the cost of, you know, going through the, the power company. One of the uh, biggest challenges that we face uh, is the fact that we chose to build on the side of a hill. As you can tell, it, it rains. We get most of our rain during the monsoon seasons uh, in July, in the summer, uh, and it'll drop an inch of rain in 20 minutes. You see how bad some of the rock was that we had to break through just to do these water lines. Water is the most violent force in nature. Water comes down that hillside, hits this, and it starts making its way down there. And it pushes it down that channel all the way to a natural ravine. And it keeps that high tunnel nice and safe. Uh, keeps that water from coming down and just wiping that whole hill out, which it would. Before the dogs, we had problems with skunks, fox, javelina, coyotes, mountain lions. Uh, we've lost poultry to pretty much all of them. The dogs have the full run of the 50 acres and they just run around all night. They probably do three to five miles of running every night. It's more of a halo that they leave uh, between urine and, and their poop. Uh, it just kind of keeps things deterred. Our losses have dropped down into single digit percentages 
with having the dogs here as well as the cats that we have. So a lot of people have cats as pets, which we love, we're cat lovers, but the main purpose here for us is rodent control. We have mice and lizards and snakes and rabbits, as cute as they are, they eat the garden. So yeah, we have lots of kitties. We'll, we'll never be without cats and dogs. They are our predator control. Pound for pound, there is no um, more efficient way to produce protein than a pond. Having live fish, it, it just doesn't get any better. Plus you have the byproduct of being able to irrigate uh, live pond water to uh, trees or whatever it is you wanna grow down below. Five foot wide trench, five foot deep, fill it with clean clay, compact it, uh, probably still a year away from, from finishing it. The final dirt work will divert any rainwater runoff around both sides which the other good thing about that is you're not changing the water chemistry. Uh, in a big rainfall, one of our monsoons, if you add water actually running into the pond, it's gonna change everything about the ecosystem that you build. So there's a lot of thought that goes into building a pond like this. Not many families get to say that they can fish right in their front yard and we're sure hoping that we're one of those families. Delayed gratification is something that's been lost on um, my generation and every generation after that. Everybody wants everything now. Uh, and it feels really good when you get it, like right now. But you know what feels great? Is when you've waited for six months or a year, or that second year that the apple tree finally produces apples. That delayed gratification is something that not a lot of people understand. How, you know, if you need that, if you need that fix, that that drug of choice of the immediate gratification, go cut down a tree, make some firewood. You can make it all happen right away. If you want to enjoy some delayed gratification, replant that tree and watch it bloom, watch it get knocked over by a storm and you got to shore it back up, put the work in and then start to enjoy the feeling that can only come from that delayed gratification. So this stuff is all designed to where one person can do it, but this is kind of a family affair. We like doing chores together. Makes it go a lot faster, almost doesn't seem like work. So these guys are about a week away from butcher and we're trying to slow down their protein intake to keep them happy and healthy. One of the reasons that we move them every 24 hours is to keep the pathogens from traveling up through their feet, from standing in a pile of their own manure. So they're gonna go onto this fresh grass and get clean feet. These are just happy, healthy birds. So if you look behind, as to just how well they clear that off. And then all the manure that they dropped back on it, about 11 days from now, it'll look like this again. No synthetic fertilizers, no reseeding. Organic apple cider vinegar goes in their fresh water uh, twice a day. Uh, it's just a supplement, helps with their digestion, helps keep them healthy. Uh, a lot of people have heard that you can drink uh, apple cider vinegar just for your own health benefits. Chickens are no different. Uh, helps them with the heat, helps them with the stress. Um, and we always stick with the organic stuff. Does it make a difference? I don't know, it makes us feel better because it's the expensive organic stuff, so. <laughs> So everywhere around here that you look, these clearings, where the solar is, where the house is, all this was trees. Anywhere there's a clearing, that was Amy and I with chainsaws cutting stuff down. And we figured out pretty quick that it would make really good animal bedding if we could chip it. And this is what those trees, when they come down, what's not good for firewood, just runs right through that chipper. 
and that provides us all of our animal bedding that we need for the pigs, for the cows, uh, and also mulch for the garden. So this stuff here probably has another 15, 20 days to go, but that is nothing more than our steer manure and our wood chips. And that's the compost that all the veggies are grown in. That's what we put back on the grasses. We found something to do with all that manure by turning it right back into stuff that we could use for the gardens and the, and the grasses. Back uh, about 2010, we were wanting a different life, something different altogether. Been in the same career uh, my entire adult life. Uh, I was crazy overweight, living the typical river guy life, uh, drinking 900 Coors Lights on the weekend and eating crappy food, nine different medications. And my doctor had recommended that uh, instead of these yo-yo diets that I was trying, just eat some real food. Every night I come up here, whatever is ready to harvest, we pick it and that's what we use for dinner. So we went to the health food store, uh, went to the grocery stores. It's really nothing available. So over time we started uh, uh, traveling to different farms and ranches and buying direct from them. We have yellow squash, zucchini, uh, the patty pan, and then acorn. And just kind of fell in love with the people and their lifestyle and uh, their health. Just the whole vibe was, was different. These are our onions. As you can see here, we've pulled them, they're done. They're gonna sit out here now and dry for three to four days and then we'll go ahead and take them indoors um, where we can just eat them. Our youngest was coming up on uh, somewhat of a college age. Uh, and I had asked my wife, Amy, is this something that you'd like to do for a living? And she's crazy like I am. And she said, yeah, absolutely. I moved out here from the city and I literally came here because I wanted to slow down and just bring more peace into my life. Add in monsoon season and yeah, I could just stay in here all day. So we started looking for property uh, and by 2013, we had found this place. Um, and we, it was everything that we could dream of at the time. You look out, what a fantastic view that this place had. And we were enamored with it when we first had the opportunity to buy the property. We thought, how cool. Used to be I'd have to wake up and, you know, drink a five hour energy and a Red Bull or whatever, and just talk myself into going to my office, try not to hate everybody, you know, throughout the day. He's gonna take your picture. Okay, he will. We'll get you in the house. Three, four. Food healed me. I've been down as low as 185 uh, from 261, just based on what I was eating. We just live a healthy life up here and it's all based on food. That's what brought us here in the first place is we wanted to raise good food. We wanted to learn how to do it and do it for ourselves. With fast food and the conveniences and the fact that it can be delivered to your house, a lot of people just kind of get away from that. So we cook together, we grow together, uh, we grow food for other people. Uh, we've met some of our best friends because of food. It's everything to us. It's that that's all of it.